Let's talk about one of the biggest mobile moments of the past 10 years, and arguably the greatest augmented reality success to date. During just one week of May in 2017, players of this game walked 8.7 billion kilometers. That is the same distance that Earth is from the edge of the solar system. Within its first month, this mobile game generated over $200 million in revenue. In just three months, it reached 500 million downloads. By 2025, players explored and walked over 30 billion miles. And the game has earned over $6 billion in lifetime revenue, still going super strong today. Chances are you or the person next to you has downloaded and played Pokemon Go. And Niantic just sold it to Scopely for $3.5 billion. Pokemon Go is a massive part of this story. But this video is about Niantic, the company behind Pokemon Go, the greatest consumer augmented reality product that we have seen so far. Before there was Google Earth, there was Keyhole. No, not Keyhole the incredibly top secret American reconnaissance satellites, but Keyhole the interactive 3D mapping company founded by John Hankey. Google acquired Keyhole just three years after its founding. They quickly renamed it Google Earth, and Hankey went to lead the development of Google Maps, Street View, and all of Google's mapping products. Think about this. Maps is one of those famous Google billion user products. That's a huge division. In 2010, Hankey creates an internal startup at Google called Niantic Labs. It's inspired by a buried ship discovered beneath the streets of San Francisco, sort of symbolism for hidden treasure out there in the real world. Niantic Labs launches Ingress in 2012, an augmented reality mobile game where players capture virtual portals tied to real world landmarks. Two factions constantly battle over these portals, ultimately coming down to the number of people and degree of coordination between faction members or team members. Ingress is connecting players out together in the real world based on physical locations. It's a totally unique platform. And this is all unfolding in the streets of San Francisco, entirely based off of device proximity to physical world locations, all while networked together in a multiplayer experience. Ingress gains a following, but more importantly, it proves this whole set of novel ideas about the way we interact with technology, each other, and the physical world in the context of a mobile game. And a bunch of novel tech ideas too. A persistent world state where actions by players affect a shared environment. And now imagine that later on for millions and millions of users. Geospatial rendering. World scale systems for mapping real world locations to game elements. Real time multiplayer interaction. Crowdsource points of interest databases. And of course, AR visualization. In 2015, Niantic spins out from Google, becoming an independent company. They raise $35 million in funding from Google, from Nintendo, and from the Pokemon company. One year later, arguably one of the craziest experiences of the mobile era, Pokemon Go is released. Within its first month, Pokemon Go generates $200 million. Three months in, 500 million downloads. Again, in just one week, players walked the same distance as Earth is from the edge of the solar system. And by 2025, players explored over 30 billion miles and that game in total has generated over six billion in revenue. Pokemon Go brought physical activity and social gathering in person into mobile gameplay, into really any gameplay. It was such a unique phenomenon seeing massive amounts of people upon release walking through the streets with friends, actually with strangers, tons of community led events, tons of events in major cities led by the company itself. The promotions were amazing, but what was inevitable is it brought people together and people were moving, they were walking. Niantic's platform was not just mobile games selling banner ads or in-game tokens. Businesses could advertise their physical location, setting up lure modules in Pokemon Go or interest points in their other IP. Cities and local governments had the perfect way to boost and encourage people to go visit their local parks. And ultimately, to understand their own cities and their own town's human traffic patterns and movement data. Niantic went on to release Harry Potter Wizards Unite, Pikmin Bloom, Peridot, and Monster Hunter Now. The games shared a lot of the same mechanics and feel as Pokemon Go, but really just did not come anywhere near the commercial success that Pokemon Go was. Niantic also launched Wayfair, a program that allowed more active players to nominate points of interest like parks, statues, and public art. This program allows the community to contribute to a common map, keeping things more accurate and engaging. Niantic also tried Campfire, a social app to connect players across all Niantic games, making the real world gameplay more social. A couple years after Pokemon Go, naturally there was a decline in usage. P 
people didn't have that same novelty and they had more effective means of playing at home because things like the in-game monetization allowed it. In 2021, Niantic launched Lightship, their augmented reality developer kit. Developers could now build their own experiences using Niantic's tech, much like Apple AR Kit or Meta's Spark or Snapchat's Snap AR, I believe real-time mapping, semantic segmentation, and multiplayer capabilities. A couple years later, Niantic even teased their own AR glasses hardware. It stands that Pokemon Go was, well, maybe the absolute perfect IP. You attracted just about any demographic, young people, nostalgia for the older generations. But maybe it was just that. It still remains a powerhouse today, but it's clear the adoption of the other AR games just aren't the same commercial success. With Lightship, Niantic is competing directly against the biggest companies in social media and consumer hardware, with much broader appealing products that exist in our day-to-day -day lives. $100 million budgets are scraps to Apple and Meta. Even Snap counts hundreds of millions of daily active users and an engaged AR developer audience. And all of this brushes up against a ton of AI research and 3D research in areas like Gaussian splatting and generative 3D. This all seems to conclude with the biggest news in gaming in 2025. That is Niantic's sale of Pokemon Go and their other gaming properties for $3.5 billion to Scopely, who's been on their own massive acquisition spree. Really, I'm not exactly sure what's next for Niantic. It seems that they're refocusing, that they've split, and ultimately the mix of effort and lightning in a bottle to build really large scale consumer products seems less likely than working on frontier research or tech component that can be inserted into many applications. That said, we wish them the best and we have to thank them for what was one of the craziest moments of the past 10 years when it comes to technology, mobile, and consumer. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and ultimately if you can, give a comment what augmented products are you keen on. There's obviously Project Aria, there's Snap Spectacles, the Meta Ray-Bans are massively successful, and there's a whole lot coming out of China. See you in the next one.